Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Mike Watt. I'm the group product manager for process filtration. Today, we're going to talk about Schroeder's rolling media filter. And this will be a little shorter presentation, strictly because the rolling media filter really is the most simplest design filter with the simplest controls to it as possible. But don't be fooled because the simplest filter can take care of a lot of complex applications and it can offer some complex solutions to your customer. Now many of the areas that we use this for filtration will be some of the areas that maybe automatic backwash filters may have problems with. We can get filtration down to 7 micron, where we're typically limited at 20 to 15 micron with automatic backwash filters. This particular filter can also handle moderate to a higher dirt load, and it works very well with fibrous or sticky influent, things like algae or chemicals, that could cause clogging to some of the automatic backwash filters. And this particular unit also works with very low pressures and, and gravity-fed influent. One of the areas we've had success with is when you're using automatic backwash filters, a lot of times the customers do not have a backwash line or a dis uh, disposal line for the automatic backwash from the filters. So this is no problem. We can take the automatic backwash filter, put it through the rolling media filter, and return the clean water and back into the process, thereby eliminating the particulates from the, the fluid. Another good area is your replacement cartridges or bag filters. Uh, if your customer has multiple cartridges or bag filters, they're using a lot of time, manual labor, of removing those bags and cartridges. And this could be a good replacement for it to reduce that manual labor and also reduce the amount of disposables that they're currently paying. It's also a very small footprint. A lot of times it can go into the same area as the bags or cartridges already. The nice thing about the media also is it's green. It can be incinerated or sent to the landfill, and this isn't always the case with your bags or cartridges. So looking at the system, the operation is very simple. If you look on the left side next to where the number 15 is, below that is where the, the roll of media would go. And it would be fed through the system by a conveyor belt on the bottom. And then number five, the, the wheel, the wheel disc, has a rubber edge to it. This compresses the media against the, the conveyor and increments it along. Water is fed from the top or from the side, comes into a header box which slows down the velocity of the water and distributes it across the length of the media. And then the water jumps out the bottom where the dirt just moves off to the side. You can see this in this bar, number two would be your roll bar with the media would be replaced. It's pre-tensioned so that the media will move along the conveyor between the conveyor and the rubber lining on the wheel disc. But if we find some of the dirt actually getting through the system, we can tighten that spring tension bar and ensure that the particulate is held on to the media while the clean water passes through. Just taking a look at the other end, you can see number seven is your stainless steel conveyor. And you can see the rubber on the wheel discs that keep the media pressed against the conveyor belt. So when it increments it, it keeps it there and it keeps the, the dirt and the uh, water inside the trough that's created. So you can see on the left side, as the water comes in onto the media, it's collected in that little trough that's created by the wheels in the conveyor belt. As the particulate is caught onto that media, it begins to build up and a head loss is created. And as that becomes more clogged, the water level will rise until it hits a water sensor. Um, typically, the sensor is about, about two inches from the media. Um, that can be adjusted depending on the, the client and how, how the particular application and water or uh, fluid is going through the system. And once the water level reaches that two inches, it will increment four to six inches forward, creating a clean sheet on the media, thereby letting the water pass through. That can also be adjusted, so we can change that 4 to 6 to 6 to 12, all depending on how much particulate loading and flow we have going through the system. And again, you can see looking down how the media is accumulated in there, and it passes on. And on the right side, you can see as it exits, we can actually just drop that down into a bin. 
the nice thing is that bin then can be taken to the landfill or incinerated as well. Um, stand below it, depending on how they wanted to operate, we can supply that stand as well to whatever height we need for the influent or for the end of the media to be disposed of. If you look at the bottom, this is some of the typical applications that we can, have been utilized for the rolling media filter. The big one, of course, uh, the backwash from the RF3 automatic backwash filter. But you can see in the food and beverage is an area that we really haven't gotten into with a lot of our automatic backwash systems, but we have some success in installations in food and beverage, spray booth effluent, rolling oils and quenching oils as well, and it's been utilized in the steel industry and parts washing. And then we're sizing it. Uh, one of the things we'd like to do, if we can't do a pilot, we'd like to at least get samples. The flow that you see with the, the lowest flow up to 71 gallons and the largest one up to 1,500 gallons per minute. Again, this is just a sizing roll of thumb, but the real sizing would take place based off the piloting and upon the samples that received. It depends on the dirt loading, the flow, and what type of fluid is passing through the system to really get a handle on how we need to size the system. If it's a heavier dirt loading, we may go to half the flow size. But again, it, it's very dependent on what we get back from the sampling and the pilot testing. You can see that by the, the height, width, and length, they're very compact, small systems. So they fit into a nice footprint for your customer. It doesn't take up very much room. And the rolls themselves, typically nylon has been used a lot in just gravity filtration. It's gone to a lot of more of the blends recently just because nylon was so expensive. But with some of the technology that's been developed, uh, we've been able to get the latest in this nylon media. So it makes it a much more efficient because uh, it's a lot lighter weight. There's a greater ability to wet out or to have complete control of the fibers that are in the nylon so we don't get any stragglers or any parts of the nylon weave that are hanging out that could get held up onto the conveyor belt. So this in turn results in a higher flow rate and much less frequent indexing, saving on the life of the media. It also has a higher temperature tolerance. We can actually use this up to 400 degrees F. The melting point on it is at 500. And the nylon is, is much stronger than other non-woven products as well. 35% stronger than polyester and 40% stronger than polypropylene. And due to the nylon's attraction to liquids, it's less prone to blinding off of the media. This in turn also results in less frequent indexing and longer life of the media. And the rolls themselves can be uh, purchased in 150 yards, 250, and 500 yards. And for the changing of it, the, the 500 yard roll weighs roughly about 120 pounds. So two people can do it very quickly and very efficiently. Well, we thank you very much for attending today's session and we wish you a great weekend. And, of course, if you have any questions at all, please give uh, Ryan Centelli or myself a call, and uh, we'll help you any way we can. Any pilots, uh, please let us know. And, again, if, if you want to know if it will work in your customer's application, we'll be happy to send you some sample bottles and labels to make sure that we can test it and get the answer back to you. Thanks again, and have a great weekend.